Hey everyone, welcome to Princess of Gay. I'm your host, Connie, and today we are here with more episodes of One Piece, uh, 1044 and on. Um, so yeah, again, as we've been doing, I don't know if, uh, how many we're going to end up doing. We've been doing four each. Uh, the last two videos have both been four episodes. Might do four episodes again here, might do three, might do five, I don't know. <laughs> Um, just kind of taking it as it goes. Um, but last time we had some pretty interesting shit go down. Um, we had, uh, we had Robin and Brooke continue to fight against Black Maria and her ladies, and it ended up going into a very personal level, as Black Maria extracted their memories, uh, using some fog of hers, and was able to try and trick them with Im images of their loved ones and everything who were dead. And it's a good thing that both Brooke and Robin are reasonable enough to acknowledge and understand that while this would be a nice fantasy, it is just a fantasy. And that it's not real and that they know that it's not real, so that they can, you know, attack them still. Um, and we and we kind of come to realize that Robin and Brooke actually have a bit in common with their backstories. Um, again, it's not like perfectly matching; like there there's some differences there, but it's it's similar enough to make you take notice. And it's something I've just never really thought about before. It's it's just, it's just fun that that ends up being a thing, and they they acknowledge it like in canon. Um, that's interesting, genuinely. Uh, but we also get more of Jinbei versus Who's Who, and kind of come to find out about Nika. Uh, this supposed ancient god that, uh, who's who was told about by a jailer at Impel Down. And then the jailer was executed for telling him about it. Because just knowing about Nika is apparently not okay. But we see that who's who is just pissy at Shanks. For, you know, being the one to steal the gum gum fruit from a ship and causing him to get imprisoned in the first place. Which shows that the fruit is really important to the go world government. Um, and because he's pissy at Shanks, and Shanks passed down his hat and the fruit to Luffy, even though the fruit was an accident. Um, who's who is just automatically pissed at Luffy, too. It's like, dude... There is no logic to that. It's like, you're going to be pissy at Luffy just because he happened to inherit a couple things from the actual guy you should be mad at. It's like, that's, that's not how that works, my dude. And on top of that, he's also racist. Uh, he was also being pretty racist towards Jinbei, who ca called him out on it. It's like, you know, dude, being racist against fishmen is so old-fashioned. <laughs> it's like, uh, that that's a really fun way to call him out on that. Um, Jinbei's dealt with this kind of shit before. Like, he's not gonna, he's not gonna just take it. So, yeah. Um... While all the other stuff continues to go on as well, we uh, have Luffy um, being rescued and resuscitated by the Heart Pirates. He's brought back and everything, um, and wants meat. They give him all the meat they have in their stores, and it's not enough, unfortunately. So, ends up Caribou comes to the fucking rescue, because why the fuck not? Car when Caribou first appeared in the prison... In Udon, like it was such a, a a just sudden shocker, like it's just like literally out of nowhere. 
Because you're literally like, uh, you're watching the scene, and then he's just there. He's literally just there. No, no explanation, no build up, no anything. He's just suddenly there. Um, <laughs> and then he ends up helping out, surprisingly enough, and ends up being an ally just for his own sake, of course. But he he ends up allying with them in a way and helping them out, and then we don't see it or hear it from him again. And then suddenly he's just back. He, he's just suddenly back and he helps out for his own sake again. He wants to get out, he wants to get out of Wano. And so he's like, oh, well, that will never happen if I don't help these guys out. So. <laughs> and so he does. He helps. He, he, he's like, oh, I have all this food in me because I can store stuff in my body like a weirdo. Um, so it's like, here, have all this food. You give it to Luffy. I I'm here to help. I'm a friend. <laughs> I'm a big, gooey, creepy friend. <laughs> I, I am so... With the way this guy just randomly appears at times, he's going to be important somehow. He is going to somehow end up being very important to the future of this story. And I have no fucking clue how. It is going to blow my mind when it happens. And I am going to lose my absolute fucking shit. <laughs> oh... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for that little bit of silence there. It's just I'm trying to process. Um, but yeah, Luffy uh, asks Momo to uh, take him back up to the island to transform into a dragon and fly him back up. And it's like, yeah, that makes sense. Meanwhile, Yamato is embroiled in a fight with Kaido. And he breaks out the devil fruit. The Ino Ino no Mi, and I cannot remember the model name. <laughs> But it basically, like, I believe translated to Big Mouthed Wolf or something like that. Um, so something like that. But it's it's a real-life um, guardian, like, like, guardian animal of Japan. And so Oda integrated that into the lore of One Piece because Wano is based on Japan. Made it so that he's the guardian animal of Wano. And so... We see that that Yamato apparently ate the devil fruit just because he was hungry, which it's like, okay, yeah, that's kind of just like Luffy <laughs> and Momo. Um, and so we see that he's using the power to fight his father. And outside of just turning into this half-beast form, which is uh, pretty badass looking, um, very pretty too, like very pretty. Like, he is just a very pretty man. <laughs> um, he also has ice powers that come with it. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, and I'm wondering if we're ever going to see, like, the full point form. Like, the, the full uh, the beast form. Not, like, the beast man form. You, you know what I mean. Like, the um, Zoan-type users usually have that. They have different points. Um, Chopper has m many more because of his rumble ball and everything, but Devil Free users typically have three points. The, their regular form, which is usually human, but not always. Um, the half beast form and the full beast form. And so it's like, this is clearly supposed to be the half beast form the the half point um which we see a lot of uh we, we've seen now a lot of uh the toby ropo going into those forms too in these last episodes um and the full point is probably just a big ma magical mystical wolf but i kind of want to see it you know 
But Yamato is definitely holding down the fort. We know Yamato is not going to be able to defeat his father. Like, he's strong, but he's not that strong. Um, at least not alone. Luffy would definitely at least need to help. <laughs> um, and so we know Luffy's already going to be on his way back up. So, yeah, we just have to kind of wait for that to happen and Luffy to rejoin the fight. Everyone else is just kind of doing their own things at the moment, uh, taking on different members. Uh, Tama's being an absolute uh, absolute MVP. It's like th things are definitely turning around. The, this is definitely the turning point of this arc in terms of these uh, in terms of these villains and everything. Um, we're definitely starting to go from oh the villains are overpowering us. We're just kind of getting by. Having some small victories, but nothing like major to, oh, things are turning in our favor. Let's kick ass. <laughs> um, but, uh, dog might start barking because of male persons here, but, but I'm excited to see where this goes. So let's just get this going. Uh, when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after fades black and fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthought and will contain spoilers to the episode. So that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So, yeah, another wonderful set of episodes that are book-ended by two really awesome things. Um, we start off with getting to see Robin just own Black Maria and end with the reveal of Momo's adult dragon form. It's like, what more could you want? It, it, it's like, this is just, it, it's fucking awesome, you know? And in between... You have so many great moments. Uh, Zoro is back in action, fighting against King while Sanji takes on Queen. We have Jinbei, uh, Frankie, and others helping out. It's like everything is just starting to turn. Everything is starting to change in this fight. And once Luffy gets back up there and takes on Kaido, it's gonna it's the final time. He's not going to lose again. This is going to be it. The final stage of this war has begun. And I'm excited, obviously. But let's talk about honestly, out of all of this, there are two very specific things I want to talk about because they're two things that I had been spoiled on. I knew about um, Momo's adult dragon form. I, I have seen images of it, um, and I've even seen people um, complaining about how it's presented in the anime. Because apparently, um, people are comparing it to a fan art piece, thinking it's a manga scan. It, it's like it's a fan art recreation of the manga scan, basically that shows it in greater detail with uh, making it look better and people are comparing that to the anime version instead of the original manga the anime version is actually the a, a fantastic representation of the actual manga it's it it looks right <laughs> as it should and obviously better through the animation and the you know just enhanced visuals of being in an animated form um, but people are like, people even when put up with that, like, information, even being given that, that, that statement, they're still saying like, oh, but, uh, the anime should elevate it to, like, unbelievable new heights. And it's like, not necessarily. It's like, yeah, some things, uh, can be, uh, adapted into greater, um, greater heights and everything. Some shots and scenes can definitely uh benefit from that but there's really not a need to do that with this it's like 
showing it as it was was already impactful and amazing enough. It looked phenomenal. It, you don't need to elevate it to something like super grand and exciting. Like, like save that for the fight scenes and stuff, for when you really want to go ham on all of that. Um, but for something like this, just the reveal of his dragon form, it's like showing it basically just how it was in the manga is fine. It, it still looks phenomenal. People are just finding any excuse they can to complain. This is, this is always the case with fandoms, and especially the One Piece fandom. It's like, the One, One Piece fans are fickle as fuck, let's be honest. Um, they'll, they'll one moment say Wano is the best arc, and the next moment say it's uh, not, or say it's one of the worst arcs because it didn't go the way they wanted it to. I've literally seen that in some cases. I, I won't say, like, all the details on what, but I know, again, just a couple more things that I have been, um, unfortunately spoiled on. I do know that, um, that there are some people out there who are bitching about it because it, it's not what they wanted. It's not what they wanted to have, to have happen. So because it's not what they wanted, they're, they're gonna bitch about it and say that Wano sucks. Instead of, you know, acknowledging the fact that it's not their fucking story. It's Oda's. And Oda can fucking write it any way he wants. He has the plan for this. If, if he wants to do it a certain way, then he's going to do it a certain way. If that doesn't line up with what you want, who gives a shit? You're not the one writing it. It, he he's not just doing this to please you he's writing the story he wants to write and honestly that's what anyone should do these entitled bitches are just complaining because they don't get what they want what they think should happen it's it's ridiculous and, and so it's just like Why do fandoms have to be like this? Why, why do fandoms have to be like this where they get just absolutely fucking stupid and, and entitled and think that they know what's best for the series, even though they're not the fucking ones writing it? And it, it's not just One Piece by any means. It's a lot of fandoms. Um, a, 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 there's a lot of fandoms out there that are fucking toxic like this. And it's just, it's gross to me. And almost, pretty much every fandom has some toxicity in it. In fact, I don't know if I've found a fandom that hasn't. <laughs> but it's different when a large portion of the fandom are toxic like this. Not necessarily majority, but a large portion nonetheless. It's just... Uh, I really really want that shit to end but then let's talk about robin right so i knew about demonio floor i i had seen art of it just like i had seen art of the uh just regular giant robin um that that was something i had seen but i didn't know all the context behind it I, I didn't know all the context, and honestly, I hadn't even put together the meaning of it, the depth of it, until I watched it here. It's like, that that actually didn't click with me when I just saw the art. I just thought, like, oh, this is cool. <laughs> this is badass. Because, um, again, I, I saw it out of context. I, I just saw images of it. Um, so getting the context here, seeing why Robin turns that way, the meaning and depth behind it, as well as like the backstory of her, like getting training from, uh, from the revolutionary army and everything. It's like, yeah, this is fantastic. This is bloody brilliant. It, it, having that context elevates what I already thought was extremely cool. And it's just like. Like I said in the reaction, it's like Yamato has been fighting to become my new favorite. Um, no one's been able to e even get close to Robin prior to this arc. 
since Eni's Lobby. Eni's Lobby was where Robin became my favorite character, and no one has even gotten close to that until this arc where both Kiku and Yamato have. Yamato more so. And as I said, it's like, he's been inching very fucking close to stepping over that line and becoming my new favorite. But Robin, she is fighting back. She she is giving it all to stay my favorite character. <laughs> um, because goddamn, that was awesome. And again, the meaning and depth to that. Being called a demon child all her life just because she's uh, the, survi the survivor of Ohara and knows how to read poneglyphs. The government branded her as a demon child to try and turn everyone against her just because it's inconvenient for them. It's like, that's excessively fucked up. She's a little girl. turned the entire world against her, forced her to have to side with less than reputable organizations and whatnot to survive, as well as to continue to follow her passion of archaeology. She had no one, and everyone hated her, and she just, she had no sense of self-preservation at all. She didn't care about herself. Which is why when she did find someone who showed care for her, when Luffy saved her in Alabasta, it intrigued her. It, it, it confused her. And so she decided to join him. And at the time, it was for her own goals. It was for her own uh, reasons. But she eventually did bond with them. And that's why in Eni's lobby she was willing to sacrifice herself as long as they stayed safe. Well, Water 7 and Eni's Lobby. She wanted to keep them safe and would be willing to sacrifice herself to do it and to leave the crew to do it. So, when her crew came to get her and Luffy yelled to her to, to say that she wants to live, that he wants to hear her say that. It was the first time in her life since the O'Hara incident that anyone showed her even a, even a tiny bit of love. Like actual, genuine love. And she, she broke. She broke out of the spell that she was under. She broke out of that cycle of self-hatred. She accepted Luffy's love and called out, I want to live. In response, she answered his call, finally, getting a, fi finally being able to, to live for, her, her, for herself again but also to live for others. And ever since, she found a home. She found a family. I talk about all the time, my favorite trope in anything is the found family trope because it's personal for me. It's, it's deeply personal. And so whenever I see that in something, it, it means a lot and it's really important to me. It makes me really strongly connect with uh, characters and the story whenever I see it. And One Piece is definitely one of the best examples of this. Like, we've seen all of these backstories, everything these characters have gone through, the family they've lost, the lives that they, the, the horrible lives that they've had to live. But we see how they become each other's family and are there for each other no matter what. We see the true love that they share. And that nothing can ever break that. And that's especially prevalent with Robin. 
And it's especially prevalent with Brooke and with Sanji and with Chopper and with all of them. It may sound silly to say it's especially prevalent and, and then say literally every one of their names, but it is. Because all of them have lost. All of them have fallen. All of them have gone through hell. And so finding this family, finding a place where they belong, where they're accepted and loved without, with, with, without even the slightest bit of, uh, what's the word? God damn it! I broke my stride. I was I was on I was on a roll here, and and I I, I lost the word. Uh, without condition, that's what I was trying to think of. It is unconditional love, pure and simple. That will never change. They truly believe in each other. They truly love each other, and they truly fight for each other at all times. Every single attack they throw is always backed up by the rest of their crew. Every time. And sometimes by the other friends and family they've made outside of the crew. Robin with the Revolutionary Army, for example. Chopper with Doctors Hirluck and Kureha. It's like they have others outside of the crew, too, that they fight for. And will continue to fight for. And that's why those reunions are going to be so satisfying and so fucking emotional. When Brooke reunites with Laboon. When um, Usopp reunites with Kaya. All of that. It's going to be such a big deal. And I'm honestly super excited to see that. It's going to be pretty, pretty damn amazing. The fight is winding down, though. We're at the last legs. We're going into the final stage. And it's not, it, it may be winding down, but it's not slowing down. The fights are still going to be intense. They're still going to be exciting. They're still going to be insane the toby ropo may be taken care of but we now have the lead performers to worry about and we have kaido and big mom themselves and this is going to go into levels that we have not seen before animation wise story wise character wise you just know that this is about to really pop off in a way that's like is unbelievable. And it's like this is definitely the highlight of the series for me. I, I've said it before, I say it again, Wano Kuni is my favorite arc in the series. It's it's not even close. There's other amazing arcs. Um I, I love the series as a whole. Um but this is by far my favorite arc. It's it's just so massive, so chock full of greatness, amazing new characters, amazing new stories. Uh, probably the best backstory in the entire series with Odin, Roger, and Whitebeard. Like, come the fuck on. And, and you have like. On top of that, just an exceptionally increased animation uh, crew that just really goes ham so often. You have just amazing moments that are just unbelievably amazing and phenomenal. It's like, it, it's just so good. It's, it's just so fucking good. It's just so consistently fucking good. It, it, it's like, 
how how did Oda do this? Is that is that his devil fruit? Is his devil fruit just pumping out like legendary stories? Because it's it's and I mean this seriously. In my opinion, this arc is so drastically better than the rest of the series. Than even what would be my number two arc. It is so drastically better that it almost feels like a different series. And that's not 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 in a bad way to where it feels like it doesn't fit with the rest of the show. No, it very much fits. It feels like that in a way to where it feels like its own thing. But at the same time, it meshes perfectly with everything else. It feels like you could watch Wano with very little context of what happened before and still get hyped as fuck. Even though the context of what happened before definitely, uh, like, you know, makes all of this more impactful and meaningful and everything, you could easily watch this arc on its own and still feel all of the hype and get all the information you really need. So, that's that's what I mean when I say this kind of feels like a different show. It's, it feels like you... You just, you can enjoy this on its own. It is so much better than everything else in the series. And just having that context makes it even better. Like, there are people who have this, like, e either in, like, the middle of their arc list or even at the bottom. And it's like, I, I genuinely do not understand. It's like, again... Everyone's entitled to their opinions. That's completely fine. I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. But I don't understand it. It makes no sense to me. It's incomprehensible to me. I, I, I cannot, I literally cannot comprehend how anyone could not have this as their number one. Again, I'm fine with them doing so. It, it's their opinion and they're entitled to it and their opinion is correct for them. But I don't have to necessarily understand it. I, like, I, I'm not required to get it. So, that's all I'm trying to say here. And we'll, we will end these afterthoughts because I don't want them to go on too long. I do have one more thing I want to record today. Um... I just, I, I think that this just continues to solidify this as my favorite piece of media of all time. And I, I'm very excited to see what happens next and where this goes. Because we, after Wano, we are entering the final saga. Not the final arc, the final saga. Which, I don't know how many arcs that will include... But you know what that means. Shit's about to get answered. We have a lot of deep mysteries and questions in this series. And shit is about to get answered. We are about to find out a lot. And I, for one, am extremely excited for that. We're going to go to Elbaf for sure. We have two more emperors we have yet to face down with. On top of that, we have the world government and, and the Marines to, to take care of as well. It's, it's just, it's insanity. It's pure insanity. This is, this, this is going to pop off like never before after Wano. Like, Wano is my favorite arc at this moment, but with how big the next saga is going to be, it could be surpassed. It very much could. 
It's very possible. It could be surpassed. And honestly, with Oda, I think it will be. I have faith that he will be able to do better than Wano. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, I know the name of the next arc, um, but I'm not going to say it here just because I don't want to spoil anyone who might not know. Um, but yeah, so I'm very excited to see where this goes. I don't know how many episodes to expect uh, to be left in this. Um, I don't know. Maybe somewhere around 20 more episodes I could see. Maybe. I, I just, I, I don't have a clue, honestly. Um, but we'll find out. We'll, we'll find out. So, um, I know I didn't talk too much about all the events in these episodes. Uh, I just wanted to focus on the ones that really, like, left an impact on me. Uh, so if you have anything you want to leave in the comments, any questions uh, on something you want to know my thoughts on, please feel free to ask. I, 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 I read every comment, so it's like, I'll, I'll definitely see it if you ask me a question. Um, so if there's anything you want to know my thoughts on, just ask. If there's anything else you want to say or put in the comments, feel free. And for now, I'm Kanye and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.